The Simpsons, Liquid Death, Water in a Can, Ponzi Schemes, Cryptocurrency, Bill Clinton. He really mixes everything together to make his own unique, crazy conspiracy theory. I need to begin this video with a big disclaimer. This video is not in support of Max Azzarello's actions or the conspiracies he believes in. This is just to spread information of what actually occurred because there is so much misinformation out there for why he did this. I am seeing on social media people saying he did it because he's crazy MAGA. I'm seeing people on social media saying he's a crazy leftist. And none of that is true. He has his own crazy conspiracy theories that I want to let you know about and you can just see how wide they spread now he even posted this an actual document about why he set himself on fire outside the trial but before that i think we need a little context about this guy and we have it right here this was posted by him on reddit and when people said that this story wasn't true he responded with an image of a mugshot that mugshot can't verify it's for this arrest but the charges do match, and it is him in the actual picture. Let's read the story. On Bill Clinton's birthday, I went to a fancy hotel where he signed his name on the wall. I had a lovely dinner and asked for a glass of their cheapest red wine for dessert. I stood up and clinked my glass for the other diners to hear, and then I sang the Bill Clinton birthday song, slow and dramatic. Happy birthday, Bill Clinton. Happy birthday, President William Jefferson Clinton. You blackmailed Governor Mike Dukakis and admitted it in your 1988 DNC speech because you were on Bush's side. Then I walked up to his signature, threw the red wine at it, then shattered the wine glass against it and walked out. And as I said, someone calls him out and he immediately responded with a mugshot that seemed to match charges that could stem from an incident like this. Does not prove this incident occurred, but he did want people to think it did at the very least. Now, he does not like Trump from what I can find, I will say, to make that clear, but he also doesn't like the Clintons. He just believes they are working together. And here is actually one of the court documents he has about the Clintons. And this also has Coinbase and a bunch of others. Yes, he has a court document, which is almost one year to the day, as you can see at the top here. And this is basically him claiming there is a massive decades-long Ponzi scheme that caused him a lot of harm and it involves cryptocurrency. And there's all of the damages he claims he has at the bottom. We also have this. This is something that he put out there. This is the true history of the world haunted carnival edition. Uh, abolish our criminal government, replace with one that serves all, the Occupy Returns booklet. And we have all sorts of stuff in here. We have Hitler. <laughs> um, uh, we have, look at the rotten and violent. You can pause this if you would like, by the way. I'm not going to read all of this word for word, but this is all out there, I guess, until Reddit decides to remove it because he had multiple Reddit accounts. They are suspended, but a lot of the information is still out there. A fascist state that is a totalitarian cult. They flip uh, morality on its head, control the flow of information, and tell the public they have no choice but to submit to their charismatic leaders who are bleeding them dry. We have a lot here. Uh, we have 1947, the Doomsday Clock. Let's see if we can find something else here. The Grateful Dead is mentioned. Civil Rights Movement, Hippie Movement. Um, Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Dr. Strangelove. George H.W. Bush is mentioned right here. And with all the surge of apocalyptic fiction, zombies and dystopian hell worlds have become so prevalent that millions fantasize about an apocalypse to free them. This is about the internet era. About being monopolized. Elizabeth Holmes of Th Th Theranos is mentioned. As I said, there's a lot here. This guy is a lot more than you would think, but here we get something very interesting. We're back to the Ponzi scheme stuff. It's called cryptocurrency, and it's our first planetary, decentralized, multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. It was created largely out of Stanford, Harvard, and Silicon Valley, and has the full backing of the U.S. government and many of its allies. The promise of a secure blockchain is a fiction. They built technology that allows them to securely funnel stolen cash out of the crypto exchanges through their companies and into their own pockets. More than half of Fortune 500 com uh, companies got in on the theft. When they offered NFTs or were using the blockchain for logistics or anything else, it was a ruse every time. In truth, those companies were funneling billions in stolen cash out of crypto exchanges. When the Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, as all Ponzi's must, it will take many of our largest companies with it. It will shatter the world economy on a scale nobody has ever seen. 
Cryptocurrency is quite literally an economic doomsday device built by many of our richest and most powerful people. And now from our doomsday clock to our doomsday device, from highway to hell to canned water called liquid death, we reveal the rotten truth of it all. And that's why I really glanced over. I'm sure someone who was wanting a more in-depth would be like, why did you do that? Why didn't you read all of it? Well, as I said, you could pause it, but it really is all tied together to him. A lot of conspiracy theorists do this. They will eventually just mention all of their conspiracies basically in a word vomit. And that's what he's done here. We have literally water mixed with highway to hell, doomsday device, cryptocurrency, doomsday clocks. We are in a doterian doomsday cult and our doomsday clock is about to strike midnight after spinning us in circles and dazzling us with lies for so long. Our own government is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist cue nearly a century in the making. This is our great reset, our new world order. Again, more conspiracies just mixed into this. Yank the rug from under the American dream and I would argue the American dream is a conspiracy in itself. That thing does not exist. Pull the rug out on the internet and throw us all into a violent state of emergency for the rest of our lives so that world's worst criminals can hold total control indefinitely. When the public learns they are victims of the worst con in all of human history, we get to defeat fascism forever. I'm already seeing some people take this exact here. They're cutting down to just this final paragraph and saying, look, he mentioned fascism, so he's obviously Antifa. Which... In the lightest sense of the word, being anti-fascist, sure. The Antifa is people would call Antifa, no. When our entire life is a lie, the truth is our fascist leader's kryptonite. Small movement name with these tr truth color glasses will become a big one. So laugh defiantly and spread the news. The emperor has no clothes. If you share this story, you will bend history. And if you do it quickly, you can stave off the apocalypse. And there is a link to the substack, And that's another reason this is included. He was handing this type of stuff out and showing it online. And that substack is where I have the actual big document about him actually lighting himself on fire. Again, before we get to that, though, I do want to show you this one here. This one here is from April 15th. This is just four days ago. He has another pamphlet, as you can see here. But essentially, this page is the pamphlet. This is what it's supposed to bring you to. So we'll just look at this. A brief guide to New York University's most criminal secrets. And a big thing is that from my understanding, from one of the clips I saw, the police have mentioned him talking about a mob front. So this might be one of the pamphlets or the only pamphlet he actually handed out today. So this is actually tying into things that were said today. Um, we have a brief guide to New York University's most criminal secrets, political revenge killing, blackmail rings, Ponzi schemes, money laundering, criminal propaganda. They claim that students were killed with names here if you want to look them up. Uh, money laundering, cryptocurrencies, let me some of the bold stuff here. It will shatter the world. Why Jeffrey Epstein attended. As you're, you see, it's a lot of combinations here. And again, you can pause at any point. You can slow the video down. You can go to the substack yourself. It might survive. Secret fascist crime of the century. Uh, hope to clear that NYU is one of the most ruthless criminal organizations that shape our world. We are victims of totalitarian calm. We've got criminals running so many Ponzi schemes that they've caused recession, like the Great Recession, the dot-com bubble. And the four, they created cryptocurrency. A bigger Ponzi scheme than any other history will soon shadow the world economy. So cryptocurrency is a big thing. To understand the true history that led us here, see this booklet they've been conned our entire lives. Um, I've actually, I don't think I've clicked this one. Oh, it's just going to bring you to the book that we just saw. So that one we just went over, uh, reading the URL. What should you do? So this is only just a few days ago, right? So what should you do? Investigate. Uh, protest. We've uh, got a criminal government and a public has gotten wind of all their biggest secrets. Laugh defiantly at history's worst con artists. Air out their dirty laundry for all to hear. They tell us we're hopelessly divided, but they already know that the only threat to them is the informed public to see through the con. So this is like the criminal uniparty thing, I guess. Uh, conspiracy mixed in. And then we have his notes at the bottom that he added. Uh, trying to explain himself. But it's been a while. Some of you probably jumped ahead. So let's just go ahead and take a look at there. This I'm probably going to read in its entirety. And it can take a while. But this was the last thing he posted. My name is Max Azzarello, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside the Trump trial in Manhattan. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. 
We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our own government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup. These claims sound like fantastical conspiracy theory, but they are not. They are proof of conspiracy. If you investigate this mountain of research, you will prove them too. If you learn a great deal about Ponzi schemes, you will discover that our life is a lie. If you follow the story and links below, you will discover the rotten truth of post-truth America. You will learn the scariest and stupidest story in world history, and you will realize that we are all in desperate state of emergency that requires toward action. To my friends and family, witnesses and first responders, I deeply apologize for inflicting this pain upon you, but I assure you it is a drop in the bucket compared to what our government intends to inflict. Because these words are true, this is an act of revolution. Last March, a billionaire named Peter Thiel started a bank run on Silicon Valley Bank. I knew enough about Thiel that I found this incredibly suspicious. My hunch was that this was intentional, though I cannot fathom why. I began re investigating online and quickly found cryptocurrencies fingerprints all over it. The bank run occurred just days after Silvergate Bank, which catered almost exclusively to crypto companies, collapsed. Meanwhile, several crypto cheerleaders were all over financial media warning of a regional banking crisis, and nobody in media was addressing the clear crypto connections. I dug deep into the financials of Thiel's venture capital from Founders Fund and eventually uncovered the following, all proven many times over. Cryptocurrency is our first planetary multi-trillion dollar Ponzi scheme. It was expressly created for this purpose by a laundry list of rich and powerful people of Stanford, Silicon Valley, Harvard, Facebook. March 2023, bank failures were all intentional. The banks were used to move our out stolen Ponzi money. This signals they were no longer dumping cash in to keep the current cryptocurrency Ponzi afloat, and it will soon go insolvent as all Ponzi's must. When the Ponzi scheme goes insolvent, it will take down half the stock market with it. The perpetrators use their major companies to pipe into the blockchain so they could funnel money out from the crypto exchanges. This includes Google, Tesla, Apple, PayPal, Facebook, Disney, Walmart, Target, InBev, Zoom, and countless others. It is a Ponzi scheme so large it created global inflation, which is why the price of Bitcoin has been a remarkable leading indicator for inflation rates. Victims who bought crypto don't realize their money has already been stolen, so the money gets double counted by the victims and the criminals who stole it. As it turns out, our elites are awash in Ponzi schemes. Stanford Start X.com, Investment Fund, and Jeffrey Epstein's program for evolutionary dynamics he ran at Harvard are both fake science Ponzi factories that these schools have invested billions in. They are filled with fraudulent companies that use smoke and mirrors to promise miraculous new technology, but always collapse while the perpetrators only get richer. Funneling trillions of dollars in stolen and cash through the stock market created the largest Ponzi market anomaly in history. The stock market signature of a Ponzi scheme is a massive increase while they stack up cash and then a massive fall as they funnel out the stolen cash. This chart shape appeared in all the companies listed above. In order to explain the massive anomalies, our criminal government unleashed COVID on the world and told us there were the stay-at-home stocks. So it ties into COVID as well. Of course it does. Ponzi schemes are vicious beasts and cryptocurrency in history, large Ponzi by orders of magnitude. It can be best described as an economic doomsday device intentionally made to shatter the world economy. The U.S. government is fully involved in the Soterian con. To illustrate its bipartisan support, I'll note that nearly every participant of the Clinton Global Initiative has ties to cryptocurrency, while two of the biggest tech VCs who participated are Trump associates, Josh Kushner and Anthony Scaramucci. Went too far. Oh. To better understand our form of government, I will point you to one of the most astonishing pieces of standalone evidence I've found. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton's 1988 DNC speech, which he nominated Mike Dukakis for president against George H.W. Bush. The speech is vile, mean-spirited roast of Dukakis that makes no sense whatsoever for Clinton to ruthlessly attack a member of his own party should have been political suicide, and he repeatedly mocked Dukakis' noble and earnest qualities. Notably, actor Rob Lowe, who was supporting Dukakis, was victim of a teen sex blackmail operation at the DNC that year. Since we know Clinton is a close associate with teen sex blackmail artist Jeffrey Epstein, we can uh, suddenly make perfect sense of this nonsensical speech by applying this lens. Bill Clinton is a cocky mob boss who blackmailed Mike Dukakis because Dukakis thought his job was to help the public. Teasing out the future uh, public revelation that Kitty Dukakis drank rubbing alcohol and offers a strange anecdote about the crack epidemic that reveals he is an extremely proud drug runner. What does this revolution tell, revelation tell us? 
that our government is conning us completely, that Bill Clinton was secretly on former CIA director George H.W. Bush's side, and the Democrat versus Republican division has been entirely manufactured ever since. Clinton is with Bush. Gore is with Bush. Trump is with Hillary. And so on. Weird he stopped before Trump is with Biden, though. That's weird to me. Just side note. Biden hasn't been mentioned that I've seen. Um, but maybe I'm forgetting. I've read quite a bit of this before I made the video. I like other documents as well. When they present themselves in public, they're acting as characters that are against one another, practicing kayfabe as wrestlers do. As it turns out, we have a secret kleptocracy. Both parties are run by financial criminals whose only goals are to divide, deceive, and bleed us dry. They divide the public against itself and blame the other parties while everything gets worse and more expensive and handful of people take all the money. Since it is fully parasitic, a secret kleptocracy is an incredibly unstable form of government left to its own devices. It can only lead to fascism or failed state. One of the key findings of this research is that Harvard University is one of the largest organized crime fronts in history, which is how they churn out billionaires. It's a major hub of the sprawling criminal network. As it turns out, dozens of the writers of The Simpsons went to Harvard. So I asked myself the question, if The Simpsons served the interest of organized crime, how would it do so? Well, it offers a dysfunctional family suffering from moral decay, a community incapable of solving its problem, a worker drone who slaves away for an evil billionaire, and cathartic glass for our poor collective circumstances. There are some notable specifics as it relates to this research in Marge vs. the Monorail. The townsfolk are too oafish and divided into, to invest in the town's needs, fix Main Street, and fall for the charms of a dazzling showman with a bogus monorail Ponzi scheme. When we know the show is closely linked to an organization that invests billions of dollars in Ponzi factories, this becomes quite damning. In Lisa, the Econoclast, Lisa discovers that the town founder, Jebediah Springfield, was a secret criminal con artist and that the townsfolk's lives are a lie. Realizing this is an important discovery, she desperately tries to get the townsfolk to listen to her, but they meet her with hostility, apathy, disbelief, and partisanship, and she fails to get through to them. Ultimately, she realizes the town is so far gone that perhaps it's better for them to be lied by con artists and she keeps the secret to herself. And here I've been, like Lisa Simpson, desperately trying to get friends, family, and the public to believe the proof of Hilterian Con. I'm trying to show them, and they turned away with hostility, apathy, disbelief, and partisanship. And so we realize the criminal truth of the Simpson. Our elites are telling us they are eroding collective circumstances that our own fault we can't do anything about it. While they steal the American dream from us, it is, for lack of a more elegant word, brainwashing. Lastly, we string these major discoveries together. Cryptocurrencies and economic zoom days device, our government is a secret kleptocracy. The Simpsons exist to brainwash us from there. The only research we need is critical thinking, and we're able to piece together the true story of our circumstances. Consider America since 1988. Institutions like healthcare and universities have become parasitic and their skyrocketing prices. News media tells us to be angry, tribalized. Daytime television warns us of moral decay. Local news tells us to fear our neighbors. The Simpsons tells us we're too oafish and divided to save the American dream. Seinfeld tells us to celebrate the assholes and be irritated by all the normal people around us. Reality TV tells us that the real life is filled with hedonism and strife. Social media owned by crypto criminals like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk is filled with nonsense, conspiracy theories, and memes reminding us that we are hopeless, helpless, anxious, depressed, ir ironic, scared, ath apathetic, escapist, lonely, misguided, and jaded, telling us we can't do anything but have a laugh at our own circumstances. Liberals mock the hypocrisy of conservatives, conservatives mock the hypocrisy of liberals, and our collective circumstance erode. The left shouts, all cops are bastards, which ensures that they'll be hated by the police and the public flies in the face of leftist theory. The public distrust of the government is an all-time high, but so is the belief that we are helpless to do anything about it. And with all this, a sharp rise in apocalyptic messaging, climate change will kill us all, COVID will kill us all, vaccines will kill us all, AI will kill us all. No matter the bubbles we ascribe, we're bombarded with existential crises with no solution. We've seen a surge in apocalyptic film, literature, and video games that tell us there is no way our poor circumstances but total societal breakdown. Zombies Tell us that the public is our enemy, and if you go near a convenience store to buy a can of water called Liquid Death. This is our rotten farce. For our entire lives, we've been flooded with media designed to slowly steer us into a world where the American dream was dead, where the public was fully divided against itself. 
where everybody believed we were powerless to do anything, our worsening circumstances, and all they can organize an unprecedented apocalyptic rug pull on the entire populace as they pivot to fascism, which is perhaps best understood as a kleptocracy at the barrel of a gun. When we piece it all together, we understand the truth. We are in a, do a totalitarian doomsday cult. Why on earth would our elites do this? There are many reasons, but the simplest is because capitalism is unsustainable and they knew it. Climate change and resource extraction would catch up eventually, so they never intended to sustain it. They knew all along this would gobble up the wealth and they could, and they yanked the rug out from under us so they could pivot to a hellish fascist dystopia. Things escalated wildly in 1988 when former CIA director George H.W. Bush got the White House to put his plan had been in action prior. Why is Stanley Kubrick's comedy about mutually assured destruction called Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying Love the Bomb? Because he was a cocky secret fascist who was getting us worried, worrying and love the bomb, why make a clockwork orange so we rejoice at ultra-violence designed to desensitize the horrors of the world? Why were the Manson family murders crawling with cover-ups and intelligence agents because our government wanted us to fear our lives and believe that hippies are deranged psychopaths? Why did Walt Disney produce a fraudulent documentary that told us lemons follow each other off cliffs so we would believe it? Why did the Beatles tell us to fear the tax man, to scoff at revolution, chase nonsense conspiracy theories that happiness is a warm gun so we would believe it? Why did Easy Rider tell us that the hippie movement was dead so we would believe it? Why did Chinatown end with defeatism in the face of mass corruption so we would believe it? Why did George Orwell tell us of a hellish future of totalitarian control that we are powerless to stop so we would believe it? Why did Wall Street tell us greed is good so we believe it? Why did do the right thing tell us we're radically tribalized so we believe it? Why did The Simpsons creator Mark Groening make a comic strip called Life is Hell so we would believe it? And on and on and on. And when it comes to any popular media, if you ask yourself the question, why would secret doomsday cult kleptocrats want the public to consume this? You will find your answers. This is obviously very bad news, but the biggest lie I've been told is that there are powerful who got... One way out of this hell world is for the public to realize that we've been conned completely so we can build a united movement that shatters every lie they've told us, mocks this rotten farce as loudly as it deserves, and aims at nothing short of abolishing our criminal government was to build one that serves the public. To understand this story is to see right through the con to become immune to the endless sea of criminal propaganda and to feel the great joy and power that comes with freedom. If a small number of people quickly put on these truth-colored glasses, we are in for an unimaginably bright future. If not, we get an apocalypse. For more information, I put together this booklet. Let me see which booklet this is. We've already covered this booklet, I believe. If not, I'll add it to the end of the video. That includes other major findings and a map to a sea of proof along with the other essays on this site. For the true history of America since the end of World War II, see here. Yeah, he's got a whole page for that. I think, I think we've seen that, though. To see its discovery unfold in real time along with further explanation, hundreds of pieces of evidence not covered here. Advice, inspiration, political theory, and the heart and soul of a man escaping history's largest doomsday cult. See my Instagram story. I'm assuming that's going to be gone by now. I apologize for leaving this so scattered, but this has been an exhausting affair. So long as you understand the true ideology, you will have to learn the whole story. Here is a federal lawsuit. I already covered that. I filed against dozens of perpetrators of the cryptocurrency Ponzi, not for litigation, but just to preserve the information attached my name to it. I was terrified I hadn't slept in days, and it shows, but it serves the purpose of keeping myself alive long enough to keep learning and telling the story. I no longer have my original research files from the crypto rabbit hole. If you want to see them, you'll have to get my laptop back from the government. Ask them how they got it. It's a very funny story. I hope you know how powerful you are. I wish you a hell of a lot more than luck. Max Azarello. And that's where he ends off the ramblings. And as you can see, it just combines everything together into one nonsensical blob. Literally water in a can combined with the simpsons combined with cryptocurrency and the, the reason i made this video is because this is just insane and like trying to say this guy's on one side or the other i mean he was complaining about trump bill clinton he's one of those people i think that believes that everyone in the government is actually against everyone I am adding this at the end because it looks similar, but it is different to something we covered earlier. This is a different booklet he made. It has about Peter Thiel, uh, claims about his Ponzi scheme with cryptocurrency, Ponzi players, Elon Musk, Jeffrey Epstein, Bill Hillary, Chelsea Clinton, Richard Branson, Rose Perot, Mark Cuban, Elizabeth Holmes. Um, talk about changing the government. Secret criminal plus White House equals secret kleptocracy, cult with state power. Uh, more about Bill Clinton there. 
uh, Budweiser and Target pretended to have wildly successful anti-trans boycotts. Um, QAnon, Pizzagate are examples of this nonsense. So they're literally high. Like he, at least he knows those aren't real. Uh, and there's the Simpsons evil brainwashing. Uh, Harvard University super crime school. Haunted Carney meme pages. Um, truth about 9-11 COVID. Like, it, it, as, as I said, right there at the bottom, it says, is everyone in on it? That's kind of where he's at, right? Want to be a prophet? Want to be a hero? Ugh. Yeah. There you go. There's, there, there's that nonsense for you.